What I'd like to do is show you how I expect people to work when they're working on simple web pages for an introductory HTML CSS class. And we start with essentially the file structure that you may have already seen, which is, well, I'll get into showing you. But what you want to do is have four applications open in order to do your work. And an easy way to remember this is to think about the process you go through. Once your computer started, you say to yourself, well, gee, I'd like to edit my home page. So number one is you want to go to your home page. And on a Mac, that's by going to the finder to where your files are stored. On a PC, that would be hitting uh, Windows E and going through File Explorer. Then you do want to edit that page. So you would open that page in a code editor. In my case, I'm using VS Code. You may be using Notepad++ or any number of other tools, even straight up Notepad. Once you've edited that code, you want to look at it. So you can open it in a browser by right-clicking on the file and choosing Open in Browser, or opening your browser and then opening the file. Finally, if you like what you see, or if you don't like what you see, you go back to the editor and change it, save it, go back to the browser, refresh, see your change. And then when you do like what you see, you open up the tool you use to move your files. And in many cases, that's an FTP client. And in other cases, that might be something like GitHub Desktop. You use that tool to move your files to the web server, and then you go view your files on the web server and see if you like them. And that's also a good time to validate them. So I'll recap that. Number one, your files. Number two, your editor. Number three, your browser to view locally. Number four, your uploading tool. And then number five, which is really number three again, another tab to view those pages. So let's do that one at a time. However, because I'm using GitHub Desktop for Windows, in this case, GitHub Desktop for Mac, I can actually do that very easily because it gives me this handy dandy little tool to get to all of the things all at once. So because I'm feeling lazy and I don't know where my GitHub Desktop icon is, I'll say, hey, Siri, open GitHub Desktop. Hey, Siri, open, I'm GitHub, listening. open GitHub Desktop. And now that GitHub Desktop is open, it's open to where I was working before, which is the root of my web folder. And I have these three buttons, open in Visual Studio Code, which is my editor, show in the finder, which is my file manager, and view on GitHub. So I'm gonna open all three of these. First, I'll open in Visual Studio Code. And I'm gonna go full screen with all of these. Then I'm going to hit on a Mac, Command tab. On a PC, it's Alt tab. Back to GitHub Desktop, I'm going to open the Finder, which is my file manager, go full screen. And then I'm finally going to open on GitHub, because in the case of GitHub, it's nice to see those pages um, even just as normal files. Most web servers will not allow you to do this. The way GitHub works out is meant for sharing files. So I'm looking at these through the GitHub interface, but I also want to go ahead and look at them through um, the GitHub I.O. interface, which is through as them being served up as a, with those files being served up as a web server. But we'll get to that in a minute. So now you can see I have these applications open. I have my browser. I have my migration tool. I have my files and I have my editor. And it would make sense to go look at that file structure. So I'll go look at that file structure. And this is my root. I've called mine private underscore HTML. And in GitHub Desktop, I have that matching the root folder, which you see up here. Um, sorry, when I go, it's in the browser. When I go here, you can see it's the root folder of my name.github.io. There's a lot of ways you could do this. In this case, it makes sense because this is my ID at this school. And this is the account I created for that. And that maps to my private HTML folder over here. However, I have a separate folder for a class, and I would create new folders for each class I was doing that had different work. And I also have an index page here, just so that when people go to the root of that directory, there's something to load, because index will always load automatically. And if you don't have index, you might not find anything. So the user will get just a page not a 404 error, a page not found. So now that we have that, we can do our first preview of this page. I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and hit open with. Now, in this particular case, Chrome, Chrome was Chrome, yeah, Chrome was already open. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Chrome. 
And now notice I am looking at the local copy of that file. It's very important to understand that local is very different from public. Um, and that's why I called that folder private. So I would see this and never think for a moment that it was on a web server. Nobody can see this. And if I were to try to validate, I would get a no refer header found because the web server that's trying to validate, which you see is public, could never look back and see private things on my page. One of the most common errors students get when I work with them is this message. They don't seem to understand that this is a local file. Since I'm on a local file, this would be a good time to go to the remote file. Fortunately, I have a link here. Oh, I don't. This is a relative link, but I do have a link here that takes me to the school web server. And I have another link here that's also absolute that takes me to the GitHub IO folder. Now, remember, this is my root, not my course folder. So I'm going to line these all up. So here's GitHub. Actually, I'll move it all the way left. Here's my local file. Here is my GitHub folder structure with files. And here is GitHub IO, which is serving up those files through a web server. And that's just the three browser tabs. Meanwhile, I have my files here. And since I'm only working on this class, I'm going to go into the class folder. And so I'm looking at those. And I'll do the same on GitHub. Going back to GitHub, I only care about what's in ITIS 3135, but this could just as be, well be 5135 or Web 110 or Web 115 or what have you. And we have these files here. I will never edit files here unless it's an emergency or I just need to do something and I know exactly what I'm doing. I always edit the files on my computer and then migrate them. Otherwise, I end up with different versions in different places. And so now I can go to VS Code and I want again to be in ITS 3135. And let's go ahead and look at the index page. So here's my index page in code. Here's my index page in my folder. And here's my index page locally through the browser. So I can look at this and say, well, what's an obvious thing to do? Well, the obvious thing is this is my teaching homepage and I want to be in the course folder. So I'll go to the course folder and I'll go to index. Remember again, this is locally. And because it's locally, it allows me to see all these files. In fact, it asked me for permission earlier. Now I'm in the index page for this course. Why? Because I put the course in the name. And so what could I do here? Well, I don't like the fact that this text is way over on the left and I have such a huge screen. So I'm going to go ahead and change my margins. I also don't like the fact that this is all jammed up at the top so much. So I think I'll change the top margins as well. And how do we change the margins? With our style sheet. So I'll go back over to, just for illustration, I'll, I'll look in my styles folder and I have a style sheet called default. Just confirm that it's there where it belongs in the styles folder. If you have more than one style sheet, you better have a good reason for it, right? So if you had a totally separate page, like your brand page or your crappy page, that would make sense. But all your other pages should use the default. And I'll go to the editor. And in the editor, in my index, I confirm that I'm indeed using that style sheet. I'm going into the styles folder. I'm looking at the default CSS file. And all of this syntax has to be exactly like so. All of that is in the head. And everything in your page should be, um, everything in body should be in either your header, your main, or your footer. The exception is your nav could be between your header and main, depending on how you have it set up. I have it inside my header. Notice my formatting is very clean. My indents are very clean. All of my opening and closing tags are vertically or horizontally aligned. And that's what I expect. What was I doing? Oh, I was dealing with margins. Well, margins aren't here. Margins are going to be in the style sheet. If I go to default CSS and I will simply say, well, on the body, I've got a margin left of 75 and right 75. I think I'm going to go ahead and just um, be really simple right now and put a margin all the way around of 100 pixels. Now, it may be that I regret that. Probably at the top and the bottom, you want a lot less. In fact, that's a bad idea. So I'm going to hit um, Command Z, undo. And left and right, I'd like those to be pretty big. And top and bottom, I don't want so big, but I do want the top. The top seems a little bit jammed up. So I'll put margin top. And that one for now, I'm going to go with 50 pixels. We've made a change, so we have to save Command S or Control S on a PC. I'm going to jump back to um, 
the browser, I'm going to look at the local copy. This way I don't have to upload to confirm my change took place. I refresh it and there we have more. And I'm probably looking at this a little bit differently sized than I should. I want to see this at 100% oh, up. It is. I've just got a really big window here. Um, but I also don't like the way that my main is jammed up against the header. So I think I'm going to go ahead and add um, the margins to my header. So I'm going to go back to my CSS. And maybe instead of having this margin top at 50, I'm going to take that, remove it, and put it in my header. And I'll do margin top 50 and margin bottom 50. And I have to check it. Command S, Alt Tab, oops. I'm using a Windows keyboard on a Mac machine and uh, I want you to learn the commands so I tend to say them out loud. So this gives us a little bit more room. Um, this is the home, this is the main, this is the footer, and this is the header, right? Don't confuse header with head with headings. And now we have something that starts to work. Still, I'd kind of like this to move closer to the middle. A common mistake beginners do is they go ahead and center that. That might make sense when you have very little things like this. You just have a few things to put. It generally does not make sense. It makes a lot more sense to increase the margins or to make a div and center the entire div. We're not doing that just yet, um, but uh, for now I don't really need all that other space. So I can go into, oh, I don't have a style for main, do I? Right, so I'm going to go ahead and do my main. And notice header and footer are right there. And I'll put main under them. That way it kind of goes in order of priority. Whoops, main. And I'm going to go ahead and put margin. Um, let's get crazy with it. Well, the problem with getting crazy with it is that that'll do it all around the sides. We don't want that. So I'm going to put margin left. And we'll go ahead and add another 100. And we'll do a margin right. And we'll add another 100. And leave it at that. So remember, these are going to be added. So this 100 pixels will be added to the body because the main is in the body. And so it'll be actually 250, which in this case we can afford. Normally you wouldn't do that. We go back. We test it locally. And now those are really in there. What else could we do? Well, I just want to get the skeleton in so everybody understands it. Notice what I've done is I've also put Design with Love by the Daring Vicar, which takes to the brand. I don't have the brand yet, so that'll be an exercise we can do. But so far, everything looks reasonable. I'm going to jump back and forth between my home and my introduction. And you notice the only thing that changes is the file name, of course, and also up here in the title, which shows up in the tab, you'll see that it says, in this case, my name, and then it says Charlotte Teaching, um, what does it say? Charlotte Teaching Landing Page, which is not what it should say, right? Because we're on the introduction. So I have to fix that. I go over to my introduction, which is here. And what does it say at the top? It says, uh, D. I. von Briesen, 3135 introduction. So I must be looking at the wrong page. Got to be careful because there I'm actually looking at this index page. And that was my teaching landing page. Um, or was it not? Oops, I was actually looking at that tab and looking at this page. So I feel really dumb now. But that says I hover over it. It's ITS 3135 introduction, which is what this is. I jump to home and it says 3135 home, which is what it is. And it says here, Home page. It doesn't have to say 3135 because that's implied because it's up here. Just like if this said uh, Coca-Cola or Charlotte or the Hornets, or I guess we don't have the Hornets anymore. Anyway, whatever that says up there is what this applies to. So you should be fine. And so those, what we want to be able to do after that is cycle through all of these pages and see pages that have the exact same header up here and the same footer down here. And the only thing that should move in the header and the footer is if you have a scroll bar, like when I go to introduction, I have a scroll bar over here. That moves at a couple pixels. But otherwise, the header is exactly the same and the footer is exactly the same. And if it's not, just copy and paste the good one to where the bad one is, and they should look exactly the same. Now, we have had trouble with these validation buttons working um, because what 
what GitHub seems to want to do is take this, when it says link to refer, it takes you to validate, either it doesn't validate at all, or it takes you to validate the root. So this gets a little bit tricky because we want, and this one of course won't work because I'm trying to validate locally. So that takes us to the next step. We now need to publish. So we jump back to um, GitHub Desktop and it sees that all these changes have happened. So we make a note, updated files. We commit to main and now we have to push to origin. And then we can jump back to GitHub on the browser and we can look at GitHub and see that those changes, I'm in 31.35, I see, well, that was 37 minutes ago. Let me refresh the page. And these were eight in my style sheet updated. That was, oh, that's all I did is I changed the style sheet. I didn't really change, change my web page at all, did I? So we can go look at the page now in the browser on, on github.io and I need to remember which one I'm looking at. I'm looking at this one and I'm looking for those bigger margins. So remember, um, I looked at, um, let's see here. I had a little more space and this text was in further. So I'm looking for that same thing here. And it looks like I have those changes. Everything is not tight, not up so close together. And trust me, uh, you can get lost in your files. You can get confused by which files you're working on. One of the biggest challenges will be file management. And it's really, really, really important you try to avoid having duplicate files in lots of different places. I've worked with students who have a copy on their desktop and a copy in a folder and a copy in another folder. And they have no idea what they're looking at or what code they're editing. So to make a folder and call it archives and anything you think you might be done with, throw it in there. So you don't have to worry about forgetting about it or, or losing it but then just don't mess with it that way. And then if you know you don't need it, delete it, but don't have a whole bunch of files. It can't be avoided in terms of backups and you can't avoid it in terms of files named index, but you should all have one welcome.html page and it should be in your ITIS 3135 or whatever course name you're working with. So let's go through this one more time and then I'll, uh, I'll finish this for now. I want to make a change. So what's the change? Well, I don't have a, a brand page. So let's say I want to get started with my brand page. And the brand page is uh, totally separate from all these others. It's going to have its own style sheet. And so first I go to my editor and I make a new file, which in most tools is command N and it calls it untitled. I don't want it to be called untitled. So command S to save. And I want to make sure it's in that same folder, which is ITS 3135. And I want to call it brand.htm. Now, most of you use HTML, whatever you do, be consistent about it. And I make sure it's in the right location next to index and introduction. And then what I can do is take my introduction, copy the whole thing. And normally I tell people when you're a student, do not copy. You should hand code. It would actually be great practice for you to hand code this. And once you know what you're doing, then uh, you can copy and paste, but absolutely do not copy and paste from anyone else. And then I have to go from the top down changing things. So the Ivan Breeson ITS 3135 brand. Now, the interesting thing about this is I'm not actually asking you for 3135. I'm asking you to come up with your own brand. And in this case, I called it the something Vicar, right? I put it at the bottom, right? It was called the Daring Vicar. So we're going to put Daring Vicar brand. And this way, it's pretty clear when you look at it, what's going on. This is not really part of 3135, that material, although we could debate that a little bit. And then um, in the heading one, we're going to have the same kind of informi information. And what else? We don't even really need our name on this because we're trying to create an alternate persona, which doesn't even correspond with that, right? This is just something fun we can do and link to and pretend we have this design company that's a totally separate thing. And what else? And now we can go into main and we can just delete. I'm going to leave this figure here, but I'm going to break the image um, until I come up with some images. 
right? And uh, later when I find a brand image and then I can say um, our logo, right? Our logo. And um, the, and what I keep forgetting the name of it is the um, Daring Vicar. I almost want to say the Dandy Vicar. I should probably change that. I have a picture of like a vicar, like skydiving or something. And then I can get rid of really all of these other things. I'm going to leave a, yeah, I guess I don't really need any of that. I can always put it back later. It would be nice to have a bullet list of your services. So I could put, we do, we do, um, this that and the other later on I'd want to clean this up and because we do is actually part of something prior to that I should do we do do as a as a separate item So I'll clean that up later, but now I have basically a consistent, an item consistent with everything else except heading two should be brand page. And I kind of said that before, so um, Daring Vicar, we'll put the Daring Vicar. We'll get rid of the word brand page because I have brand page back here. I don't really need this menu stuff because the Daring Vicar is something um, totally different. And I'll need to put a logo over there on the left. And uh, so I'm going to copy that figure stuff um, and have to decide what goes there, find my logo. And all this other nav stuff in the footer is also unnecessary, except. Um, I have the same item, the Daring Vicar, which just takes us back to this page. Get rid of this excess. The last two items should always be closing body and HTML. So what have I done here? I basically created um, a brand web page. The problem is it's still linking to the default style sheet and we don't want that at all. So we're gonna do Daring Vicar brand. Now you could argue that it should just be called brand, but if I have you do a brand for your ITIS 3135, that's what that would be called. This one is for something really totally different. And in a perfect world, this would be its own separate folder, but we don't want to get that complicated. But that means I have to create that style sheet. But let's see where we stand. I'm going to jump back to the browser and I'm going to go ahead and let's see, Command N. Well, whoops. Uh, probably best to open this in the Finder. And I'm going to go to this new page, which is here, and right click and choose Open with Chrome. And here I have this very generic looking page. And it looks so generic because it's not using a style sheet. And that's okay for now. We'll go ahead and make a style sheet super quick. What I can do is in the Styles folder, I can take my default CSS select everything, make a new file, paste everything, save it, and call it, uh, uh, what did I call it? Um, did it daring vicar brand.css. And I'm gonna go ahead and need to change a couple of things. So we'll just go from the top font, family, and something very different Frank Goth, header, footer, these margins. I have a lot of room to mess with, so I'm gonna just put, I'm gonna go crazy for now and worry about the design later, just so you understand what's up. I'm centering anything in my header and footer. In the main, I'm doing a margin left on my body. I'm gonna put a border uh, radius. Heck if I know, we'll do 10. We'll do 100 px. I go crazy with my borders, and we'll do border uh, style 
do dash dotted double groove inherit initial heck if I know we'll do double and um, border color uh, what would a vicar be a vicar would be something brown I think I don't like brown but I bet you vicars are brown of course I can change this we'll do burly wood brown border color would be brown and then maybe the body color will be burly wood burly wood and what else can we do we'll leave everything else here margin left uh, we'll have our headings we want a different family for our headings different font family um, I'm just randomly picking things but you can go through all the research for that Did I end that okay and I think that'll get us started command s we can go back to the browser to see what it looks like locally refresh this and woo Nelly so it's a little bit of funky going on here. I've actually got my border, which is bigger than my page. And that's no good. We shouldn't have to scroll. And everything's awfully small. It's a common mistake to make stuff bigger than it needs to be. In this case, I don't have a lot to say. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make the font size about 200% 200, um, 200 so everything's twice the size as it would have been originally. I don't really like those font combinations, but you can go down a long road of worrying about fonts a little too much. Okay, so we need to put a logo. Now, why does it have these so differently sized? I think because this is a caption to the logo, and in this case, we don't need a caption. So I'll go back to my brand, and um, let's see. I don't need the fig caption there. And... I should clean up my code just a little bit like so. Command S, Command Tab, refresh again. And I wanted those to the left of the heading. So I think what I'll do is, uh, that was a little bit of a hack. Let's see if it works for now. We're actually gonna put the, the heading around the figure. What we really should do is a proper float We'll get to that in a minute. This probably won't validate, but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm feeling lazy. Refresh that. And boy, so it makes the alt text super big. So we don't really want to do that. Um, so I'll put that back where it was. And somewhere I'm going to have to find the code to float left. Um, and I should put that in a figure that's in the header, but we'll get to that in a separate lesson. Because we can refer to this figure by referring to anything that's in the header that's a figure tag. We don't have to make a new class for it, which I've seen a number of people do unnecessarily. And the Daring Vicar. And let's see, what else do we really need to do right now? Oops. I want to deal with this um, this scroll this uh, what am I trying to say we want um, this border style to not be quite so big and uh, it's as if it's forcing well it's actually trying to cover all of the stuff in the page because I, I put such a huge margin that I probably shouldn't have done that because I have it on the f footer um, and I just don't need, I, you know, I thought I would, I thought for a moment I was working in main and I wasn't. So I'm going to remove it from the header and footer entirely and put it in main. And I'm not even putting a margin on the header and the footer. And that should address some of that. And now we can we fit a little bit. Still a lot of dead space here, a lot of dead space there at the top. So I'm probably still being excessive. I will um, the margin at the top should only be let's do 50 and 50 
and probably what I really meant to do was the right and the left. So margin right would be 200 pixels and margin left would be 200 pixels. And we save that and we refresh it. And now we've got, you know, the beginning of something. Although you see here, we're also jammed up against the edges. So that's not any good either. I hate that. I hate when things are just too close. So remember the crap principles. C is contrast, R is repetition, A is alignment, and P is proximity. And that definitely violates the proximity rule. Things are too close together when you have a line way up against the edge like that. And probably that radius is a little excessive. We'll, we'll compromise. We'll go 7, 5, the border style, and then I'm going to actually put a margin all the way around of 50 pixels, which will then in turn mess with my other margins, but that's okay for now. Okay, so now we have something that's kind of cute. I definitely need some font, font work and so on. Also, this is a little too close in terms of proximity. Notice how they're almost overlapping there. So we can add excuse me, on the header, we can add a margin top of say 50 pixels. Bear in mind that um, this also applies to the footer because I've, I'm styling them both in this situation. Okay, so that, oops, so that added it up here, which is not what I meant. I meant to do that on main. Um, so instead, whoops, I did not. I'm undoing the wrong one. I'm trying to go too fast. That's the margin for the whole page. This is the margin for the header, which I didn't need. Um, and what I wanted here is the margin to be greater. So let's bump that to 100 on main. Let's also clean that up while we're here. Command S, Alt Tab, Refresh. Now we've got a little room there. All right. Well, this is enough for now. Once we are happy with the local copy of this, which I kind of am, now we can actually go over to GitHub Desktop. It sees all the changes. We say um, made brand page and CSS for it. Now, if this were FTP, you would actually move the individual files that you changed, and you have to make sure to move them in the right location. So you have to move the style sheet over to the styles folder, and you have to move the brand over to your course index. Or you can use the more sophisticated tools in FTP that synchronize your directories. Just be careful. Once I used that and it wiped everything out because I had it synchronizing in the wrong direction. So there are settings you can be sure on, but always back up your work. So I'm going to commit that to main. I'm going to push it to origin. I'm going to jump back to the browser. And in the browser, I can go to GitHub and confirm that my brand page now shows up. I refresh it. There's my brand, happened 13 seconds ago. My styles updated 13 seconds ago. And now I should be able to go over to my page. Oh, that's not the public page. Notice again, this is private, right? I can go, how do I get my public page? Well, I should be able to go to where? There are, 3135, refresh that, and click my brand, which at the moment just goes to brand, and there's my alternative page. The other thing I can do with this is click on um, Daring Vicar here, and it takes me there, right? We could almost argue that because we have a link to that from the bottom, we don't need that up in our main menu, and we could treat that as something other than a normal homework assignment, but you get the idea. If you follow this general scheme for everything you do, you're going to end up with a nice set of pages that are all pretty consistent, except those that are different. The bad design and the brand are going to be very different, but the forms, the table, the contract, the home, the introduction, actually I haven't assigned the contract yet, but that'll be coming, and the introduction are all the same. That should be enough for now just to rehash. You open your files in their folder location. You open your editor, whichever it is. You open your migration tool, whether it's a FileZilla or WinSCP or a GitHub Desktop and you open your browser and you use your browser to look at the local copies and also to look at the remote copies. Then one final thing to touch base on, when I validate this page, you'll notice that what it's doing is it's actually trying to validate the root folder and this is no good because the page we actually want to validate is this page. Um, 
notice it's ITIS 3135. So even better, we'll go, for example, to the brand page. And the brand page, when I click it, we want this page to validate. So I'll copy this. I click this and you'll see that it's not validating that. So I have to paste the one I want and the whole URL goes there properly. And then I check. Now, by the way, this does not, a lot of web servers do this properly. GitHub IO does not. So I check it. And in fact, it says, hey, no errors or warnings, which is great. I can check um, source and image report and outline. And notice it changes. Let's see, check error pages, check address. And then I can check again. And it gives me more information, including your pictures are missing and where the problems are and so on. Now what I can do is take this URL. Let's see if there's a simpler one to do. I copy this URL, including all of those um, percentages. And I'm going to go to my code. And in the bottom of my brand, I can't use that refer. By the way, when you're at your school, that works fine. If you want to test it this way, you can't. I have to paste that URL. And uh, this is a drag. The fact that we have to do this is a real drag. And what you're really doing is you're telling it, go look at this full URL. Uh, fortunately, at um, some school web servers, that's not necessary. And you'll know when you click on this through the other URL whether or not it works. Just to finish that off, what I'll do is I'll upload that one last time once I make sure I've saved it. Command S and uh, commit, push origin, go back to the browser, refresh. And now when I hover over this, notice the long URL at the bottom and I click it and it submits the proper page to the validator.